was just streaming a few minutes ago, became very frustrated with the uh, file that, uh, that uh, actually, who are they? I think it's CSUN. Yeah, it is CSUN. Columbia University, essentially, had provided, and, and, and I was going to, you know, after the stream, I was going to send a letter of complaint to them, and I decided the best way to do that would be to show that if you add up all of the, you know, the floating point values that they give us in that, uh, in that file, you know, they're very, very low, and so there's no way they could be accurate. Uh, well, I won't say the joke's on me, but the I'm wrong. If you do actually add them all up, you get 7,969,616,434.33267, uh, which is actually a very reasonable estimation of the population in 2020, close to 8 billion. So these values are actually correct, at least the ones in the, uh, the I tested using the ASCII 2 file. So these values are correct, but now of course the question is, can we <coughs> can we confirm that we have the uh, right values uh, that in the floating point that you know in the EHDR file that match the uh, the the text, the the ASCII 2 files? Because it it could still be the case that we're reading stuff wrong. We could, of course, read directly from the ASCII 2 files. But that's so ugly, I don't want to do it. So now we're going to ask the question of, okay, how are we going to sort of, uh, well, we really want to do some sort of random testing here. Um, we've got to be very careful, of course. Um, and and then, and obviously we want to test values that are not identically minus 9999. That, that would be bad. So, and I think the way we can avoid that is by looking for the dots in these files, because uh, minus nine and, and, and spaces don't have any dots in them, because they don't. Um, this is going to be very large, so I'm going to do a less on it. Yeah. The problem I think here is going to be, aside from the fact that these lines are like bajillions of lines long, um, the problem here is going to be basically uh, we don't know what line number we're on with grep. Okay. Uh, so what is the solution here? Well, I don't know. And you tell me. Um, if there is anyone there, do tell me if you have a better solution. Uh, really, we're going to have to somehow find a way to. I mean, you can do. Um, you know what I just did. You can do this. Actually, you can do a cat minus n. And it'll show you um, it'll actually number the lines for you. Um, and so then if you do an fgrep minus v dot, you can see, you know, um, you can see which lines are good, and then you can use that data combined with the with the XLL corner YLL <laughs> corner data to see uh, what the see what the value is there that's not uh, an available value. Um, and then test that using um, using uh, using our TIFF our EHDR file. That's pretty ugly. I'm taking a pause for dramatic effect. But I think we can we might have to do that. Uh, obviously, we don't have to. There's billions of ways of doing it. Um, Another way to do it would be to see if QGIS will give us the floating point values uh, correctly and we can compare to what our program gives us. I do not know if that actually happens though. Uh, but let's find out. QGIS is a much better alternative than... Um Wait, what am I doing? In theory, AI grid files are actually, uh, you know, QJS hates them, but it should be able to deal with them. I need to fix the startups here, but anyway. Blah, 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 blah. Authentication disabled, but it is going to load. This is, this is where we are. The western half of Africa. Coordinate. Um, come on, man. Give me, you know, we could actually maybe do a little color map here. I am so freaking smart. Uh, zero to twenty-eight. Random colors. 
Now I've got to go to a different something. Hey, 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 red and colors. So you can't change it now from equal. Oh, I, I did change it from continuous to equal interval. 255. This actually might get us down to what we need here. Um, and I'm just wondering if this is going to be bad for a totally different reason. Because these colors are pretty similar to each other, so there's really no good way to uh, distinguish between them, except we just need to avoid sort of the lower colors, uh, because we know those will uh, have a uh, something something words. Okay. Looking good. So now, yeah, this, this was a brilliant idea. There really should be a way when you do coordinates. What does this thing do? Well, that's not what I want. So this gives me the coordinates at this point, but you'll notice that they're only in one decimal point. And since we're at down to the 30 arc second resolution, it's a lot better than that. Um, right clicking does nothing. Left clicking just moves me away from the uh, moves me away from the United States. It's so sad. All right. Let's maybe do a better one here. I know how to zoom in, so we can zoom into something that's like, uh, and hope the coordinates get more accurate. By the way, this cutoff here is not because of QGIS not uh, rendering, but because we're using only one eighth of the world, uh, and and because they're broken into eight different files. So I think this is like the minus 90 degree line that cuts off the eastern United States. Um, let's go ahead and uh, properties. Let's do something that's actually useful to us, maybe. Uh, rainbow. Butterfly in the sky. I can I can fly twice as high, because I use marijuana. Oh, come on, where's my rainbow? It was spectral. That's what they call it, yeah. Classify. I'm going to invert, because I just feel that uh, red should represent high population. Equal interval. I think we can go as high as eight without having real any real confusion. Okay. Apply. I'm smelling something burning, but you know that has nothing to do with the computer. Uh, but I might need to stop the stream briefly. Uh, or actually, I'll just sort of. Okay, so now we can just do double click. Yay! We're getting there. This was not the, the most brilliant idea in the world. Fine. Okay, next time that that happens, I'm going to just try to lower the scale without going anywhere. Because clearly, I have fudged this up. By the way, if you're wondering how to use QGIS, uh, so am I. I just do very minimal stuff with it. All right, let's just go back to the one into the million. Let's go to the scale that's going to show everything. Or not, you know, it, it's kind of cool. Um, yeah, there's a way to get back to the, to the, oh yeah, we just do it from here. Zoom to layer. This is going to bring us back to the full extents. Yay! And I should be able to mark out a little box uh, and actually have to do something. I mean, I realized that uh, I could mark out a little box. Um, right now we're not centered on anything, so I don't want to actually do anything with that. But let's see if we can move San Francisco to the center. Uh, and by the way, if anyone is in San Francisco and you see a heart, uh, return it to me because I'm trying to make a joke about uh, the... the uh, okay, so this is already fairly high. So one... So if I go to one to ten million, that should really zoom in a lot. Okay, go... Whoa, this is really nice. I, I don't know what the hell... It's population. It's not, you know, it's not super exciting, but it is really nice looking. So now... If I, I'm going to... This blob, I think, is known as San Francisco. So now we're 1 to 1 million. Let's see if we can get even tighter into 1 to 500,000. 
Nice. Um, now, what we can do here is we can actually go through the range of uh, a range of values here. Um, instead of focusing on a single pixel. Um, but we're not going to do that, because I decided we're not. Unfortunately, since I, since I don't know what the value here is, it's going to be really difficult for me to find where in the, uh, you know, I, all I can tell you is we're expecting a high number. I don't know what that high number is going to be. But if the results are reasonable, I think we can at least, uh, you know, we can at least have some confidence. So it's going to win 250,000. Yeah, and now you can see the individual arc seconds, uh, which is good. So, let's go for broke. The city of San Francisco, if it were, okay, can I, oh man, I can't even let them stick here. I was hoping to cut and paste the coordinates there, but, uh, but no. Okay. And just to be obnoxious to G QGIS, make it work a little bit harder, we're going to do that. Okay. So let me... Let me just do nothing at all for a while. Okay. Let's go back to BC s uh, Pop uh, Center. Yeah. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do a little, you know, a little die testing here. We're going to... Um, find the byte corresponding to this, convert that byte into a uh, floating point and see if it is even reasonable uh, for the number that we would expect it to be. So 1162612. Um, and this is just a test, so I think we can, it's minus, of course. Um, and the other coordinate is I guess it doesn't really matter because we have 436527. That's actually too far north for San Francisco. Okay, but it really doesn't matter. So now we need the inverse conversions, uh, and we will hit... I mean, the nice thing here is if we're anywhere in the range, we're going to hit non-zero values, which is what we want. So, so that is sort of a... That is sort of a benefit we have here, is we don't need to be too accurate. Uh, okay, so if it's 43,200 for latitude, uh, we take the longitude, add 180 to it, divide the whole thing by 360, we can have a number between 0 and 1, multiply that by the width, 43,200, and that gives us our column number. For the latitude, we 90 minus it, do we? Uh, yes, so that's how we make it increase. Divide that by 180, multiply that by 21,600, put a semicolon there, and let's debug call row, and then we'll actually try to look at it. Uh, and again, remember, call row is um, each of these data values takes up four uh, bytes. So this is not going to, we're going to have to compute the byte value separately. But first, let's see if we did this right. And I would be very suspicious that we did not, uh, because generally, uh, computers are unreliable. Okay. Now, obviously, we need to we need to uh, turn them into integers. So let's go and let's do. We just round them off a little bit here. Okay. Now, from here, we can compute the uh, byte. The byte is going to be the column number or byte ra if you're French. Is going to be the column number, the row number, sorry, times 4,300 plus the column number. Um, that's the data chunk we need times 4. And I'm hoping that this guarantees we started a multiple of 4, um, because if we don't, we're not, we're going to get garbage. Okay. So now I'm doing something that's going to annoy a lot of you, which is I'm going to test unnecessarily here. And that number n ends in 96, and 96, any number ending in a multiple of whose last two digits are divisible by 4, is divisible by 4. A little math trick for you there. Um, and you can actually continue that with 8, 
for the last three digits and 16 for the last four digits, and it's not, it's not it, you can actually see why that is the case. It's because 10 is equal to 5 times 2, basically. Okay, so now we found the byte. Now we're going to do da 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 We're going to do all these things here. And god damn, I hope this is going to be worth it. Ah. And instead of I, of course, we're going to be doing this with a byte. Alright! How many people live in this little chunky part of San Francisco? That is not San Francisco. I think it's Seattle. Well, Seattle is that? Yeah, Seattle might be that far north. Okay, we there! Th this is just beautiful. Okay, hang on. So I have open day. Right. Seek a seek set. Uh, read a, because you know why? We have not defined buffer yet. Actually, that shouldn't be a problem. Or should it? Let's find out. Read there, line 24. Okay, what's going on? Hmm. Um. You know, something tells me that. Nope, this should do it. Seek to. No! Because we already did it on multiply by 4. Screw you. Seek to this. Uh. I think I've once again done the, the wonderful thing of computing something without actually uh, debugging it. It's a lot of fun in purely, purely, purely functional languages. That would be absolutely correct. You never ever have to return a result. You just have to compute them. Not very useful, but... And you could cheat. Okay, and we're getting a zero here, a big fat zero, which is not what we want. So something is effed up. We don't know what the actual value is there, but we do know it's not zero. We do, do know it's uh, fairly high. So now what we need to do is change our string to float. No, that actually might be okay. Huh. And we're still using the... Um, and reverse isn't, isn't going to help, I think, in this case. Uh, maybe it will. Let's try it with reversed. Still zero. Not cool. Uh, let me make sure that I'm not doing something really stupid. Stir to float buff. Yeah, that should be it. Alright, well, we'll just go into stir to float here and we'll see what the buff looks like. It might be that it's something really, really simple. The format is really, really simple. Uh, and this is going to print out something that is not necessarily a... Uh, that is not necessarily... That's not necessarily a, a number or a character because it is it is um, it is a string, and so I'm using less here not because we we only have one line of output, but I wanted to see it like this. A day. Actually, I didn't want to see it like this. It looks horrible. All right, let me go ahead and convert them at least to. Um oh, did I need to do this first? Yeah. Um, no, no, actually, I had that. So, so let's get rid of this little alternative method I was using, and let's go to the reverse. I'm going to assume for the best right now. Okay, it tells me there are nine to the negative times ten to the negative twenty-two people there. Uh, which actually could have been reasonable for some of the other values, but not here. Let's reverse the bytes, try it again. Yay! 1172.3159. And again, I don't remember which pixel I chose, but I do, do remember it's red. So now we can go over here. Your mama. Um... Uh, 
properties. I always forget that. So that is, it says it's 28 to 28, but it is, in fact, oh, uh, because it's, the, the maximum value here is just insanely high, that's why. Um, so if we made this value like 6,000, um, that, that, that's too high in the other direction. I mean, this value 1,500, it should, and inverted as God intended, do this, apply, we should get a, uh, we should, uh, yeah, this magic should happen, uh, and we have it. So, okay, I think we're good now, actually. So now we need to clean up our, we need to, uh, we need to back up our code first, because it's working. So let's do take care of that real quick. And now it's in Cal, center of the world. Oh yeah, I used to have an alias to BC quick back, but I don't have it here. And I want to see, this time you're actually gonna see maybe, um, and you'll see here, it did do something. So if you want, even if you don't want, because you know, it's my freaking stream. Um, we can actually look under BC get cow, and we should see a BC pop center. That's not the interesting file. That's just an exact copy of what we have now. Quick back though, well, t why am I doing this? It's just, I can just load that file, can't I? That's one sort of ugliness that I always forget about. I don't know why I'm CDing to it, because that's actually a bad thing. Oh, right, because this is a directory. And here I can just do a load of... Alright, so... The original file was backed up on... These are times that are in UTC, so about four hours ago. And then at this point in time, I made these changes. And then... Uh oh, that's right now. Is it right now? Wait a minute. Okay, and I think the current version is in... BC pop center and so I don't need to back it up but the next time we do a backup those changes will be written here so I, I, I at least I hope okay now that we maybe have a backup copy let's get rid of a whole bunch of this crap uh, we don't need this test data anymore I think I stole this little chunk from inside the loop so we do need to restore that to do declare loop Let's go ahead and fix that part of it now. Let's go ahead and go... I actually don't want to do this now. <laughs> Let's go ahead and go in order. Uh, row call lat on. And the plus 0.5, which should actually be here too, is because the uh, the pixels are not aligned with the edges of the uh, edges of the map. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, did I actually cut and paste? I didn't, uh, didn't cut it out. I just left it the way it was. Okay. So now, my row, her row, that's how Japanese people sing Footloose. That is probably insulting to Japanese people. Um, it's great what you can get away with when no one's watching your stream. Um, and I, I'm going to print out the latitude and longitude at first because I want to see the numbers are actually not aligned with the North Pole. The only weird one here is buff, because it sort of just needs to exist. It actually, it probably doesn't need to exist, but I don't think you can, you can't put my buff inside of, you can't do like a, a my buff here, because the variable will disappear before you're done reading from it. Okay, if val equals zero, next, am I, do I really want to do that? Uh, ignoring that grid for now, which is okay. Um, uh, 
I'm going to regret this. Let's actually show them all for right now. There's going to be a lot of zeros, of course. And I want to go back to Mr. Shell. Uh, something I should have thought of earlier, by the way. Um, I could just, because I don't can't use history in this correctly, uh, or the way I want to, I might as well just alias testing to this. Um, uh, boy, there's some crap I didn't want. Okay, since we're pretty sure this is working correctly, um, we can come in at that debug line. Still printing way too much stuff. That's my phone ringing. Let's see who's calling me. Oh, it must be a neighbor of mine because it has the same area code as I do. So, kill off that neighbor spoofing call. And that area code, by the way, is 505. If you do want to call me, the number is not going to be given here. Okay. Um, still getting too much crap being printed. Where am I doing the non commented out? Uh, no, I, I do want it printed there. I don't want to print it here, but we shouldn't be reaching this part of the loop. Aha! Yes, we, we we're not even going to try doing that here. Okay. Oh, beautiful. Okay. So, um, the very first the very first latitude coordinate is not aligned with minus ninety or with minus one hundred and eighty, which is correct because it is like half uh, one half over. Uh, and then the numbers do decrease, so that's good. If we went wanted to go all the way to line 4,000, we would see they would go all the way to almost 180, but not quite. And I'm not going to do that because it's a pain to do that here in Emacs. Actually, hmm. now that this is big enough for you guys to see it, and unfortunately, I don't think, because that's, uh, that's in a um, different... Uh, That's in a different shell. This is a the the you can't reverse inherit from shells. Yep, because there's a PL in front of it. Okay, and so now if we go to forty three two thousand two hundred, which we can do here. Our last works a lot. That's not what I meant to do. Oh, and I screwed up. It's actually going to be forty three thousand one hundred ninety nine. So let's do that. Uh, and there it is. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful does not quite touch the uh, the right edge of the... which is actually th plus 180 and minus 180 are the same thing. Okay, this is gorgeous. Now all we need to do is get rid of... So the zero value... Th this is actually technically not zero. This is not available. Uh, and that means that they didn't even bother to measure there. Uh, because this close to the North Pole... First of all, these are very, very small uh, areas. Because as you get closer to the North Pole, uh, the, you know, the longitudes, the latitudes remain pretty much the same. Longitudes gets m much, much smaller by the cosine of this number here. So this is a very small area. So I think they don't didn't measure all the way up to, um, uh, blah, 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 blah. they didn't measure all the way up to like 60 north latitude, which is actually going to be maybe a problem for Finland, Sweden, uh, and that other country there, Norway, and some other countries too, actually, I guess. Okay, so the one thing we need to do here is, we still need to do a little bit of cleanup. Um, So most most of these things actually have what's known as a, a bad value. Uh, oh, why am I doing this? That this would have been easier just to cut and paste using Emacs's own. Okay, and that's the value that's like the null value, and we do need to ignore that. Uh, but that's ignored for a totally different reason. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see, so you da, 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 da. What's interesting here is we actually get our data um, before we compute the row, column, latitude, and longitude. Uh, so why is that interesting? It's interesting because... Well, it's not that interesting. 
uh, because that means we can actually save ourselves all these calculations uh, that we don't need, all the, the savings will be trivial. I'm babbling to myself now. Uh, we could actually, in theory, read the value first, and if it's not one, a value we like, don't even bother to do all of this, these other co computations. However, um, however, 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 the, the savings would be so minor, or maybe not, I don't have no freaking idea, but I, I'm not going to do it. All right, let's see what this does now. Um, okay, not skipping the bad value, that is probably understandable. Um, because we're, we're dealing with some real ugliness here. And this is actually going to be okay because we know the first few lines are going to be bad bells. Okay, it is... Okay. Oh, here we are, yeah, versus... Now, nowhere on Earth in one... Uh, well, first of all, it's negative. Second of all, it's 10 to the 38th power. Not very hard to find, then. So now... We don't need a bad vowel. We can just test for less than zero. Because... Uh, now here's where we make a humorous comment. And I delineate my humor with the H tag, which is not actually used in HTML because they use H1 through H6, but not H. So, haha, -ha, no negative people that we know about, but we're not going to count them if they exist, uh, until unless they get really loud and noxious about it. And by the way, if you just thought about Char Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, where the grandparents take the anti-aging serum and become negative age and have to be subtracted, um, good for you. Okay. Oh, I don't need that anymore. Um, right. So now, God willing, yeah, I'm just going to do it here. This is much, much easier. Test is a built-in Unix function, so that's why I'm not printing. That's why you can't use test. I could alias over it, but that's a really, really, really bad idea. So now, um, this is actually sort of correct. Um, because the first few, in fact, it makes me kind of wonder if we actually need, need to have encoded the first few values, because we know they're going to be junk. Um, yeah, so this is going to be kind of boring until we hit something that's sort of interesting. That's probably a blah, blah, blah sentence. Okay. Now, the cool thing is, in, th in theory, we could start at a much higher value of i, and we might do it if I get bored with this. Um, yeah, this is, this is kind of stupid. If we actually let this continue, we will see the lowest value of i that has a non-trivial, has a non-null value. Uh, although at this point, I am getting pretty darn frustrated. All right, we'll give it another 10 seconds. If that doesn't work. We are going straight to the uh, to the code, and we're going to make a much higher value of i. Of course, it, there's, it's possible that something's actually wrong with this, too. So, I mean, that, that's another reason to... Um, oh, I'm trying to, ex I'm trying to change buffers inside of the shell. A real shell. Okay, um... So let's see if we can get down to about 60 degrees, which is 30 degrees from the uh, from the pole, and every line represents. Yeah, we're going to need to do this in a shell. Okay, so it's going to be about 30 degrees down from the pole. Uh, each, and remember we're counting pieces of data. Uh, 30 degrees down from the pole. Each 30 degrees is going to be actually this many half minutes one of these days um, 
3,600 half minutes. Each row takes up 43,200. So we should start, roughly speaking, at this number here. Um, let me be sort of nice and... I mean, it's, it's a zero. We wouldn't have forgotten it anyway. But now let's see if I can do my cut and paste like this. Booyah! And now we go back to our shell for testing. Okay. Well, this is good. I mean, this is latitude 60, like we estimated. Uh, the numbers are really tiny, but at this point I'm willing to believe them, uh, because the way these guys do things, these numbers will eventually add up to about 8 billion. So this is good, this is good. Um, so I guess the thing to worry about now is, are these numbers uh, accurate? And we did find see earlier that they probably are, even though they're infinitesimally small. Infinitesimally small. So, let's see. Now if we wanted to, we could print all this data out and sort it by uh, the last uh, field. I don't know if sort minus n understands exponential notation, but it shouldn't matter because the values we're interested in are uh, uh, the values we're interested in will not have exponential notation. So let's let's boogie this baby, and we're just going to reuse one dot text because I'm extremely bad with names. Uh, this actually might take more time than we we want it to take. Um, Although in the final, we will actually have to do this. I mean, that's uh, it's not something we can get away with not doing, but maybe we don't have to do it right now. And you know what? We can actually... Oh, we could r do the random thing again. And see, that's actually probably a much better idea. So let's, for right now, I think we can get rid of that. Did I get rid of my random dollar sign K thing? Okay, I could rewrite it. I'm going to show you another little feature about... Um, um, Emacs, not that you care. I'm going to describe the variable kill ring, and it'll actually show me what's in the kill ring. So, dollar sign K, isn't that gorgeous? I mean, I'm not going to use it, but it's sort of nice that y y you have that. And we would also have this, by the way, in the quickback file, I think. So anyway, that's that's kind of a niceness that Emacs uh, Emacs lets you do that. So what we're going to do here is just do for k equals zero to I think we said ten thousand k plus plus, um, and then we need a value of i, but okay. So dollar sign i equals random number times the total number of data pieces. I think after we, yeah, I think after we don't need to define the byte number because we actually do four times i below. So we're just going to take the flubber, the round, of that and see what happens. Probably nothing good. That was really freaking fast, though. Okay, so, okay, well, now let's see if we can do a sort minus kn. One, two... Because I'm printing these like this, this is actually just one field, three. Uh, no, K3NR. Okay. So this tells me this little chunk here has 2,907 uh, people in it. Let's boogie. By the way, I think we can close all these sort of useless windows here. Uh, useless? Useless? Useless. And here we're going to just replace this with OpenStreetMap. And if this works, no, it doesn't. That's not what I meant to do. Just cut and paste. Go! Be free! Go! Zoom in a little bit more. I think... I'd be very, very surprised if that's my city. It is not. It's Phoenix. Okay, so good. We're confident because we would expect portions of Phoenix uh, to have a large population even though Phoenix, hello, hello, do, we, do I play Fortnite? I do not play Fortnite, Mr. Bot. Um, and since you are an, uh, a bot, I think I'm going to well, if I say no to you, you'll probably get on your spam list, so 
I won't say anything to you. I will remain silent and let my silence be a negation. Whoa! Oh, oh, you're listening to me! Hang on. Oh, hang on. Sorry, thought you were... Oh, why am I doing that? I can hear you. You can hear me. Oh, sorry, I thought you were about... I do not play Fortnite. Uh, I will... I don't know. Why am I doing this? Um, it's just weird, because I know... I don't have to type to you. I do not play Fortnite. If you're interested in what I'm doing here, let me know. I can, if you have any questions about it, that's cool. If not, that's cool, too. Um, at some point, I'm going to add a list of streamers I recommend you watch if you don't want to watch me, which you shouldn't. Um, but I don't have that up right now, so just... Uh, aimbot. Oh! Oh, so this bot is not a bot in the sense of a uh, Twitch bot. It's a Hello Sammy. Uh, it's a bot in the sense of somehow uh, you you use a bot aim oh okay to me aim means uh, America online instant messenger clearly here aim has a different meaning meaning aim as in shoot a gun to shoot someone in a game hello Sammy okay boy I get the nice nice to have nice, nice to have viewers I mean that that is always cool um, so let me know if you want to know more about what I'm doing here um, and I will not fault you if you do not want to know more about it because it's a fairly uh, you know there are people who want to know more about this but not not a lot of people um, so okay alrighty Oh, you're here for your own interest. Well, tell me about your own interest, unless it is Fortnite, in which case I've already said I can't help you there. Um, you're trying to code one little thing. Okay, you know, uh, tell me about it. If it has anything to do with what they're doing, I can probably help you. If it doesn't, um, I might, you know, we, we could go into tutoring instead of what we're doing here. Um, but tell me what you're coding and we'll, we'll, we'll work from there. And if it's, if it's going to be a Discord bot, I don't want to hear about it. Sorry. Well, I mean, tell me that's a Discord bot, but I'm not going to help you with that. Um, uh, actually, people can't he uh, people in the stream can't see this. Uh, we're watching, especially if it's on video. When you build, you can edit buildings, basically, to start editing. I look at the building, press E to start editing. Then you select the tiles you want to edit by pressing L and B. Then you when you release L and B, so you press E, you start... Jesus Christ. Um, this is actually good, but are you talking about open street map editing? So I, I assume you're talking about, I don't even know what LMB is. But, um, but, oh, in-game editing at Fortnite, uh, yeah, that's left mouse button okay yeah sorry I don't think I'm gonna be able to help you with that no, actually let me rephrase that I'm not gonna help you with that because it's not very interesting to me sorry uh, one of my um, one of my the project I'm sort of doing here is I want to use a real world map for a for a game uh, Fortnite I know creates great maps and stuff but I want to use the real world map and it's probably not gonna be a first-person shooter unless I feel extremely violent um, so sorry I can't help you if you have any other questions let me know you want to go watch a better stream, which is any other stream, uh, go ahead. Okay, so now we're going to check to see if our second point here is also in a city. But I'm fa getting fairly confident here that we do have this. We do have this grok down correctly. We are converting floats correctly. And let's see where this is. Well, it looks like it's in India, which is actually yep. Ahmadabad. But also a very populated area. Okay. One more try, just because I'm really bored, and then we will we will actually we're actually gonna, we haven't actually started coding anything we need to be coding right now. That's sort of the amazing part. Um, what? No results found. Oh wow! Did I, did I really screw? Did I screw up that cut and paste? Maybe. Um. Let's try that again. There we are. And this is in the middle of nowhere. Actually, I think this is a city in Russia. But anyway. Okay. 
So now I want to kind of do it again. I am such a whore. All right, let's do it again. Okay, and this time, south of the equator, east. I'm gonna guess this is like uh, Africa. Not very exciting, by the way, but it, but you know, not that I have anything against Africa or the African people. Don't like those little huts you make, though. Limbashi again. You'll notice we're right on top of a big city. It's not a huge city, but but you know, given that we've only looked at ten thousand points. Um, okay. Now, now we really don't need to do this any further. We, we're kind of done with this. Um, but I am so bored that I want to test this with 100,000 entries. And maybe, um, let's see if we can do this with a million entries. So then we should be able to find some really, there, there's actually, believe it or not, there's actually laws of uh, statistics that will tell you what, you know, you should be expecting to find the nth biggest value if you go with a million out of this. It actually doesn't even have much to do with the, um, with the number of, of points you sample. It's just one of those weird normal distribution things. So here we have a huge, huge 33 east, 35 north. Uh, I don't know. Istanbul maybe? Constantinople? Okay, I really need to find an English version of this map. transport map and I think there we go that's the one that actually has uh, this is doesn't seem like a huge city to me but oh wait a minute wait, 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 wait where are we Beirut I didn't realize Beirut was super high heavily populated but yeah it is it is pretty populated okay so I'm now happy that this is working so now that we've gone through all that crap the, you know, um, how is this going to apply to our finding centers of places? All right. So I'm going to go ahead and make a backup of this one as well, because I kind of, because I'm freaking paranoid. And you'll notice when I do the backups, I actually back up everything in the directory, because I'm freaking paranoid. Okay, done. Um... I'm trying to clear out chat because uh, the guy who was here earlier uh, does not is not interested in what we're doing, which is fine. There's no one is. Okay, so now let's do this, what we actually need to do. The, and this is going to take a while, so we're not going to run it here necessarily. Um, okay. Now, I really should be commenting my code, but since I'm talking through it, uh, I'm not going to do it. That's a, that's a lie. I, even if I weren't talking through it, I wouldn't comment it. I'm an idiot. I, I just hate I just hate myself. Okay. Um, so there's two things we need to know. Basically, the population at a given point and the nation at a given point. So, and I think what we discovered here. By the way, believe it or not, all this crap here, all this crap here, isn't going to be what we need. Uh, we will need to do this. Uh, but all the row column stuff is crap. Okay. Uh, let's see. My buff. Uh, I'm actually kind of not wanting to check errors because it adds lines to the code. But I'm going to be... Okay. I'm going to be... A, I'm going to call this A error. And call this... We can actually reuse the buffer because we're, we're going to convert it to a value and, and then... Uh, and then uh, mess with it. Um, a error, bad seek. A read, a buff. If a read is not for, we have something wrong has happened. And then my a val is this. And now we're done in code. Oh, sorry, I actually copied the part I didn't copy. So if you really wanted to, you could do this in a loop, a zero to one loop. Uh, for example, error zero, error one. Um, that's freaking insane, though. 
Okay. Now for uh, the second file, the, nat the national grid file, every piece of data is two bytes. Um, I don't think I'm going to say B bad seek. I could though. Uh, and here we're only going to read two characters in. And we're not going to convert them to float. Um, or are we? No, we're not going to convert to float. Uh, instead, what we're going to do uh, let's see, we it's going to be debuff. Should be no A values here, except for that. Oh, there's too many of those. There should be no dollar sign A values left. There we go. Okay. Um, this is actually pretty simple. This is going to be... Um, I'm trying to do it more efficiently, and I don't know if that's actually a good idea or not. Because bbuff is only two characters. Um, oh, is that really bad, though? All right, let's just be fancy here. So first we calculate B vowels, which is we split on nothing B buff, and then we map over this. This is why people love Perl. This is just bizarre thing to do here. Uh, and then we just compute, well, let's call this B vowels. Then we just compute B vowels as being, it really doesn't matter which order we use because um, because ultimately we can convert it either way. It's, we're, they just have to be unique. But I'm pretty sure they're using the uh, high byte as being the last value. Um, okay. And believe it or not, the rest of this is actually not necessary. Uh, now the only problem we're going to have here, as we had earlier, uh, is that there's going to be a bunch of data at the top that we don't need. We can skip over it, and we will skip over it, but the fact that we are even computing it uh, is going to make life ugly. Let's do that anyway. So over here, AVAL is less than zero. That means we're at a point where they're not really measuring population. If AVAL is equal to zero, we could in theory skip it because it's not going to add anything to the center of population. However, it is a different case. It's where they've measured the population and found it to be zero, which is different from uh, not even bothering to measure the population. So a little bit of fun stuff there. And let's see. What do we say? 10 to the sixth every million? This is just to keep us from getting bored. We'll debug every one millionth row, every one millionth uh, data piece, every four millionth byte. And the number of rows here is going to be, I don't know. This might be too often of, uh, this might be doing that too often. But let's do it. Immediately we get screwed. I love it. Um, read error, what line is that? Line 25, that's got to be BA, because I know we... You read not equal... To oh, yes, I forgot to say 2. I'm an idiot. All right, let's see what that does. Okay, this is going pretty poorly, because we have to get uh, to... I think that we had to get to, like, 5 million before we started seeing real values. Uh, and I could be wrong. It could be even much bigger than 5 million. At one point, we did compute the total number of... Uh, I'm not even using screen, so I can't jump out of this to do something else. I mean, I could, obviously. But Alrighty, not looking good at all, seven. And this is one reason when we actually run the program for production, we're not going to sit and watch it. I'm going to run it offline, in fact, because... This, we're going through a lot of data points. We're going through 43,000 times 21,600 of them, which is 20,000 times 40,000 is 8,000, thousand, thousand. Uh, yeah, I think we actually said this is, um, uh, we could actually check the size of the, uh, the E header files. But I think it's like 8 billion or something.
There has to be a better way of doing this. Oh, it actually jumps forward to the actual last one. That's not what I expected. Oh, actually, hang on, where are the here? Yeah, they should be there. 2019, 204. Not 1204. Um, here we go, 1.8. Yeah, so we're, we're looking at like a fairly decent chunk of data here. Um, the population count is, so there's, that's actually one, 3.5 gigs of, of bytes is about 1 billion points of data. Um, and here we are at 28 million, so not looking too good here. So let's expand on our random theme here. Um, I keep deleting it. Let's expand on our random theme here because this is going to um, this is going to uh, help us. We can't actually do it for production because. It, we don't have an ordered list. If we had, you know, if we had an ordered list of numbers from one, zero to, you know, whatever billion, nine hundred million, whatever, we could actually just put stuff in random order and see stuff as it comes about. But, well, we, but we don't, and it probably would not be useful to create one for that purpose. So I'm going to once again regret having deleted that line, and this is just a. By the way, in theory, uh, I'm not going to... You can do a control uh, Y and then... It worked. In theory, I was going to say you can do control Y and then escape Y to find older, or meta Y, to find older things that you've, cu uh, you, that you've cut out. Okay. Um, let's see what this gives us. I'm, I'm actually kind of excited to see what this will do. Oh, I'm... Wait, 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 what? Okay, the fact that it's hanging for so long is bad. The fact that it has no results is worse. Alright, what's going on here? Uh, 1 million K I equals, that's fine. Do I have any sort of print statement here? I do not. So even the first time we were looking, we would have gotten nothing because I have no print statement. Um, and this is where you might want to you know, convert, look at latitude and longitude. Uh, so maybe that's why I was doing that. Um, Yeah, this is going to look pretty stupid, but let's see what happens. Uh, why is BVAL always zero? Mm, this is not looking good. So... and debug the value of B buff. Okay, so I'm not computing it correctly, but it is being sent correctly. And I think the reason is because I don't know how to name my arrays. Okay. One more time. There we go. Uh, we don't know what these countries are, but... Uh, Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think we probably need to, to compute latitude and longitude here. I don't even know why... We, well, these numbers, all of them could not add up to much. We're going to use them anyway, but... Alright, so let's go ahead and go ahead and... Um, convert. Let's go ahead and compute latitude and longitude. Uh, and I think that will be... We don't need the rest of this code at all. And I did that because I overcut. OK. 
Okay. So that's lat long aval bval, and I've got a little clever. I have got a clever little trick. I am going to use to see some useful information. I can't talk though. Okay. I'm getting more and more concerned that AVAL is not coming out correctly. I mean, although it's, it's quite possible that, you know, we have so many places where no one lives. Okay, but I'm suspicious now. AVAL equals... Oh! No, 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 no. A buff. I knew there was something wrong there. So let's see if there's a dollar sign buff being used anywhere else. There is, but it is below the point where the code actually runs. One more time. That's looking pretty good there. That's looking pretty fine. Um, so now, what's clever is, let's go ahead and uh, put this into one dot text. It's a million of them, so it takes a couple of seconds. Now if we sort by one, two, three, four, the last, which is the country number, we don't know what these countries are, but they should all be grouped together. And actually, now that I'm looking at it, I think I have uh, the, the, the byte adding order incorrectly. I think it actually is zero, 01, because they, they start numbering the countries. If you looked at QGIS, they start numbering the countries of like four. They don't, you know, they don't go up they're not into huge numbers, and why would they be? Fun fact, I cannot listen to um, music while programming. Uh, no one asked, I know, but let's see. Oh, uh, that's still not good. Those numbers are still way too large. And I know it takes up two bytes because Okay, I'm unhappy. Because there's more than 255 countries in the United Nations. Uh, at least the way they were doing it, there were. Um, I need to fix that. But first, if we sort by the uh, the fourth field, the country field, what we should see is a bunch of cities in the same in the same country. Except country zero doesn't really exist. It's I think it's water. And there's a brilliant frickin' idea. And you know, I think if BVAL is zero, we can actually skip. Um, well, actually, we, we probably want to give um, the ocean its own <laughs> kind of... Uh, let's go ahead and do a sort minus K for NR. We, we'll leave it in for country zero, but country zero, I'm pretty sure, is the, uh, is the ocean. Okay, so country two, f this actually I think might also be an error value. <laughs> okay, so the question is, are these points here in the same country? You wouldn't think so. Oh, I'm sorry, we're looking at the first, the first two. Um, still wouldn't think so though. Let's take a quick look here. Uh, let's take a quick look here. Five. Okay. Uh, something's wrong here. I just don't think there are countries that are... Well, let's find out. Let's find out where this country is. And I'm hoping space will work as well as comma did. So this is in, you know, mama country. Am I still on the transport map? Yeah, yeah. Well, these names are at least a little bit more English uh, than the other ones. So I'm in the country of... I think it's it is Brazil. You know, there's a shot this is actually correct, then. Um, that Brazil is country 65534. Uh, but this doesn't seem like it's going to be anywhere near Brazil. No, it's not. 
So I'm doing something wrong here with my computation of uh, of the of the B vowels. Um, and I can probably solve that by doing putting B buff here and seeing if it's the same. And if it's not, obviously, I have F something up. So testing will take a few seconds. Okay, now we can look at the um, Yes, yeah, this isn't looking good. Although, am I getting... Did I actually mess that up somehow and look at two different countries? Uh, I might have done that. Sorry, I might have actually... Well, let me check here real quick. This is 25.679. And over here we have... Oh, right. These points will be different because we are... Uh, we're randomizing. Brilliant of us. So now we think these four points are in the same country not really looking good but their bike codes match as well so something funny is going on here and let me make sure we are okay so in B we are seeking to two times I which is correct reading two bytes correct doing this hideous thing to the two bytes but that is working so it's correct um, so why is this unhappy? And E headers don't have a, despite their name, don't have, EHDR files don't have headers, so you can start right, right, reading right at the, uh, right at the beginning. And these are two separate files, so we shouldn't have problems with, you know, double seeking, although that shouldn't cause problems anyway. <sighs> And let me just try these four values, but uh, things not looking good right now. No, it's not what I meant to do. I meant to do that. That is South Africa. This is probably not South Africa. No, it's not. It's Algeria. Unless there was like an enclave of Algeria in South Africa. It did have a little thing around it, but I don't think that's the case. Okay, so for some reason I'm not getting the um, the national grid values correct. Um, it's possible that I've misconverted from the TIFF file. I mean, uh, I mean, I'd use GDAL convert and all that stuff, but it's possible that I just uh, that GDAL convert didn't like it for some reason. Okay, so I'm not happy about that. Let's take a look at POP, the National Grid header, and see what that's about. Okay, so this is what we expect, actually. A bunch of, um... Yeah, actually, why don't we pump this to OD? Because OD actually, Octal Dump, actually will compress a lot of this stuff for us. Okay. Um... When I say that, I, I don't mean it, apparently. Um, the stars indicate places where Oct OD has compressed it for us because uh, the values were redundant. Okay, 148, I mean, that seems like a, a sort of a reasonable... Well, the country number there, maybe only one of the bytes represents country number. No, that can't be because there's too many countries. 148, 148, okay, well, let's see. We can bring it up in QGIS again and see what the hell is going on. Um, and you thought I was going to say, but we're not going to. Ha! <laughs> let's do that, actually. I mean, because this is, um, if this shows errors, then we know something's, like, seriously wrong. I need to fix something to fix that. Layer is not valid, is not a valid layer and cannot be added to the map. Well, that is a problem. And I think it's because I don't have the other uh, other files that I linked linked to it. I do. Ooh. So, 
So why is this not a valid file? Let's have QGIS try to open the original. Yeah, we get it. Okay, that's weird. Something is very wrong in the state of Denmark. Alright, maybe maybe this thing has... Oh, uh, ah! I, I should have looked. QJS in the background. This might be strange and not interesting. One of those things that's... Okay! And that value is, as you might expect, should be two times... This should give me two. It does. Okay, good. Okay, so where the hell did the QGIS go? Always fun. Okay, so this actually does look like it has values from 23 to 840. Um, so... Something weird's happening. Let's see if we can... Now, this is just for my own personal amusement. We're going to turn it into pseudoband color. And in this case... Yeah, we don't really want to do that. We want to, uh, we want to randomize. And we can't change equal interval. Oh, we can actually, I'm sorry. We'll go 255. This is actually not going to help us that much because it's still going to mean three countries will get the same color. And so I don't know why I did that. Well, actually I sort of do. Um, Okay. So, according to what I'm reading, the output of sort minus blah blah blah, um, I'm going to ignore the FFs, but let's say for here, the these four lines here, they'll say minus 29, 28 is one color, is the same color as 24, 3.6, and we think that is not true. So it's minus 29 latitude, 28 longitude. So 28.84 minus 29. And that's not helpful. Um, actually, let me check something that I might have effed up my order of... Uh, I might have in, in e Emacs printing reversed the reversed order again. So let's get Emacs up here. And uh, so it's, okay. So it's that long. This is format for OSM. Okay. So now let's figure out why the hell this is behaving like this. Okay, so according to my output here, this is a fun, back in the olden days when we had small screens, we used to tile our windows like this. Uh, so basically each one was like a little bit to the right and up of the other, so we had a nice little cascade thing going. Because it was, you know, we didn't have much space back in those days. It was terrible! Okay. So maybe I should write these down somewhere. Nah. And I'm beginning to worry that maybe these high numbers represent some sort of error. So from here, let's zoom in really close to what this, uh, what, one to a million? Zoom out a little bit, maybe. A little bit more. You know what that is? That does look like an enclave inside of South Africa, actually. Come on! Yeah, this I'm going. I'm going in circles here. Kay. So, what is this little country here? Is 
If that's an Algerian outpost, I would be seriously oppressed. Show me the nation of South Africa. That was probably racist. My little, in my little, um, Lesotho. Okay. Let's go down a little bit further here to see if we can find countries that have more normal. Uh, we can't. And it might be that I'm, I'm the FF actually means zero in this case. Um, So six five two five seven. So these three are in the same country. Um, not impossible, but this one's way the hell out there. So eighteen nine nine minus ten. Except I'm pretty damn sure I just reversed that because this uses the alternate format of putting the x value first. Okay. You know what I could be doing here, actually? I could actually see what color this thinks it is. Um, there's got to be a way to freaking test value at a given point. Let's see if I can find it. Um, oh, this is fun. Not useful, but fun. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm also getting a little bit, not dazed, but I probably should take off for a bit after this. Streaming for another one, uh, one hour, 15 minutes. Nice. Okay, so now we're stuck on the question of how do we know that the um, that the EHDR file we have is an accurate representation of the TIFF file? And more importantly, um, how do we know? Oh, actually, I think we have grid values here. I think we have an attribute table. Um, let's see. General style. And wh or I guess the big question is, why are we not getting values between 23 and 840? Uh, and I'm beginning to think that maybe uh, this is like a ones complement or something. I, th I think maybe FF actually doesn't mean 255 like it normally does. So I'm going to look into that. Uh, and I should do that on stream, and I might do that on stream, but uh, I might just sort of cheat and do it, uh, do it offline. And it's possible also that the int 16 format is not what I think it is. That would kind of suck. Let's... let's check for that real quick. Because we knew float 24 wasn't what I thought it was, but I would think int 16. Let's go for broke here. Um, let's see what we have here. So maybe int 16 is much worse than I thought it was, not just a 16-digit uh, answer. Base encoded row. Um, oh my god. Uh, no, even that. This is too complicated. Um, <laughs> let's just see what that does. And I'm going to say string, which is what it is, it's a two-byte string, uh, must include in 16. Yes, it must. A string representation of a 16-bit signed integer equivalent. And the only thing I'm thinking here is, because country names are positive, um, we might be losing the, you know, it, that we might be using unsigned ints. Although it doesn't say that. Okay, public level. So what are we doing? 
Are we going the wrong direction? Oh, this is totally wrong. This isn't what I want at all. And I closed the wrong window. Wrong tab, rather. Okay. So apparently int 16 is not just two bytes, one 256 times the other. So let's see if we can ask for int 16 format. Uh, oh, that bothers me. String format. Um... See if we put Perl in there. There's still issues here, which is that the same two bytes we're getting. Um, convert string to int 16. Wow. Almost exactly. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, let's see. That is not helpful. And I pro I think at this point I can actually add Pearl. And the must include in 16, that's the key phrase here. And must include Pearl. Ah, uh, this is the sounds of silence. I'm being silent on purpose. Um... Yeah. So whatever method I was using is probably incorrect. Um, it still bugs me that the fact that if you have the same two uh, Byte values, it, it still means the same country no matter how you, uh, n no matter what uh, you know, deterministic process you use to convert this into. Um, and I'm beginning to think the FF here is, should be treated as a zero. Uh, and then the FE should be treated as a one. Yeah, that might just be the, that actually I think is probably correct. And I think I can, that's provably correct that that's true. Um, and they don't use every uh, digit, but so I think at least we can convert to what we think they're saying, and then we got to figure out why it doesn't match up with the map. All right, uh, that is the end of the stream. No, it's not obviously the end of the stream. The end of the stream is when I end the stream. But I'm going to end the stream now. Thank you for watching. Good day.